Good morning and welcome to this joint overview and scrutiny committee meeting. I'm Councillor Keith Wellham and I'm chairing the meeting today. May I first remind you of some domestic arrangements. Please ensure that microphones are turned off when not in use and that you do not interrupt other speakers. If you are attending the meeting to speak and persistently interrupt the meeting, you may be asked to leave. Please ensure that your mobile phones and laptops are on silent. Additionally, we will be using e-voting for this meeting on the modern.gov app. I'd like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be filmed except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the council to have consented to being filmed. By entering this meeting as a speaker, you are also consenting to being recorded by the council and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The council, members of the public and the press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and the press are not lawfully excluded. So, in attendance today, we have members of the committee. We also have Councillor Harry Richardson and we have Councillor Morley, the leader of the Suffolk District Council here. Um, officers are Fiona Duhamel, Director for Economic Growth and Climate Change, Michelle Gordon, Corporate Manager for e Economy and Business, Zoe Banthorpe, Art and Culture Lead. Jan Robinson is here, uh, Corporate Manager of Law and Governance. And Alicia Norman is the Lead Officer for Overview and Scrutiny. We have other officers here making sure the whole thing goes smoothly, we hope. So can I move to the agenda, please? Are there any apologies for absence or substitutions, please? None received, Chair. Thank you. Uh, are there any declarations of pecuniary, other registrable or non-registrable interest by members? Do we have any? Thank you very much. Can we move on then to the minutes of the, jo the joint meeting held on the 19th of December 2022? This is for the public part of that meeting. So are there any points regarding the accuracy of those minutes, please? If there are not, can I have a proposal, please, that we accept? Proposed by Councillor Muller, uh, seconded by Councillor Adrian Osborne, and the Governance Officer will now conduct the electric, electronic vote. Thank you, Chair. Members, that vote should now be in progress. Councillor Lindsay, can I take a break? Uh, Thank you. Councillor Osborne. That's fine, we'll get someone to sort out for you. Can I take your vote? Thank you, Chair. So that is seven votes, four and five abstentions. That's carried. The minutes of the joint meeting on the 19th of December 2022 have been confirmed. Can I ask if we've received notification of any petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme? None received, Chair. And are there any questions by the public, please? None received. And are there any questions by councillors? None received, Chair. Thank you very much. We can now move on to item seven of the agenda, which is the review of the culture, heritage and visitor economy strategy. And I'd like to invite Councillor Harry Richardson to introduce this item. And then we're going to go straight on to questions of the cabinet member and the officers immediately after this brief introduction. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Chair, and good morning, members. Um, I, as you said, Chair, I, I'll only be brief, as I think the report is fairly self-explanatory. Um, in way, by way of context, uh, as you may be aware, Bayborough Mid Suffolk undertook a, a corporate peer review last year. Uh, one of the recommendations from that was the development of a culture, heritage, and visitor economy strategy um, to provide us with a compelling narrative for all of those aspects across both our two districts. And I think you'll all be aware from the various wards you represent that there are particularly unique uh, culture, heritage, assets, um, and a vibrant visitor economy across all of our communities. Um, again, by way of background, we um, committed to uh, contracting uh, CT consults uh, last year who undertook a series of stakeholder engagement exercises late last year uh, with a view to providing evidence base for the next five to ten years. Um, so as I say, the strategy itself is still very much in development, um, but we are making good progress on that and hopefully you can see some of the detail in the papers for this morning's meeting. Um, I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Um, obviously, I can only answer if, on behalf of Mid-Suffolk, um, but if there are any questions specifically related to Baber, then I'm obviously ably assisted by officers behind me. Um, but as I say, more than happy to take any questions if there are any. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Could I ask um, Councillor Richardson, please, on the food and drink heritage, you mentioned two food enterprise zones in Stowmarket and Worstead. Um, can you please confirm that the food enterprise zone is still going to happen in Stowe Market? Because we'd heard rumours that it wasn't. And if so, is it still going to be on the Gateway 14 site? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Muller. I've not heard any information to con contradict um, what our current position is, but I'm happy to hand over to officers if they've got a more detailed update. Uh, I can answer that if that's okay, if that pleases the members. Um, the Food Enterprise Zone designation was applied to the Gateway 14 site as Mill Lane, um, as was in by DEFRA. The theoretical designation is still in place, as is the Enterprise Zone designation on part of the Gateway 14 site. The ambition in working with the Gateway 14 board is still that there will be an element of food and drink manufacture and production that would be part of the Gateway 14 um, development site, and we're actively working with the um, development team to progress that. Uh, Councillor Osborne. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, my question really is the uh, visitor economy strategy. Um, one of the issues that I know Baber have got, and particularly uh, in the area that I'm uh, member for at Sudbury, is the lack of uh, hotel accommodation and you talk about visitor economy strategy and um, improving the, the uh, footfall, etc. cetera. Um, I, I'm well aware of uh, the problems that uh, uh, we have in Sudbury, and in particular, um, people that come to Sudbury that will not stay in Suffolk. So could I ask, have you, has there anything been undertaken about uh, getting uh, better accommodation for um, visitors to our area um, and I would hesitate to say that uh, perhaps this does come into the uh, area of um, Mid Suffolk as well. Yeah, thank you. It certainly does apply to Mid Suffolk as well. So if uh, would an officer like to respond to that, please? So um, what's uh, Coming to uh, ONS this morning is very much about the process of developing the strategy and the engagement that we've gone through. So um, it doesn't really, that question I can't really answer in terms of what the findings are because we haven't, um, we haven't reached that point yet. Um, however, um, we are, uh, as officers in the economy team, we are acutely aware of the perception around lack of hotel accommodation ac across both districts. And um, certainly uh, where we're looking at some schemes coming forward, like the Hamilton Road scheme, as you're probably aware, we have been talking to hotel operators. Um, it, it's quite complex in that uh, it's obviously demand-led, uh, so we do rely on the operators being um, wanting to come to areas. Uh, so it's a careful balance between sort of promoting um, uh, the place uh, for hotels and operators coming forward and having available sites as well. Um, However, it is a piece of work I think uh, we will be taking to, to look at as part of our next economic strategy that we're 
just starting to, to, to pull a framework together for at the moment to, to replace the recovery plan. So it's a piece of work that will come probably later this year. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I, I really appreciate that. And uh, the sooner the better as far as uh, Suffolk as a whole is concerned, and particularly uh, our two areas, uh, Baber and Mid-Suffolk. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming to Councillor Grandin next, and then Councillor Egg Young. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, there's quite a lot of other um, schemes around the county, and, and I, I presume a county um, tourist um, or visitor scheme as well. How will it all fit in together, please? How do you all interlock and work, cooperate together, or, or don't you? Can you tell me how it all works, please? I can pick that one up. Um, so we work very closely with the Visit Suffolk team, the Visit East of England team, uh, the destination management organisations for Ipswich, Bury, Newmarket and the Suffolk Coast. Um, we also have a very strong strategic tourism um, group that works across the whole of Suffolk, work pulls all of the local authorities together so that we actively work together on the delivery of programmes and understanding some of the challenges that affect the, the wider visitor economy and culture network. Um, Zoe also works alongside the, um, the culture board for New Anglia, um, so we've got that um, more regional approach as well, so we're very well connected in terms of the, the Suffolk and the regional uh, picture. Could I ask a supplementary, please? Thank you. Um, so it could be said that we might be in competition, perhaps, with some of the other um, districts. Um, how does that work? Because obviously, if someone's coming to Suffolk, we want them to come to our districts and not necessarily go to the more obvious coastal side. How? How does it work that we are trying to persuade them to come to our district as opposed to elsewhere in the county, please? Uh, again, I, I can pick that up. So, as, as Fiona mentioned, the, process, the uh, report today is primarily to do with the process for the development of the strategy. What we will be doing following the, um, the final development of the strategy is working on an action plan. So, we would expect some of that um, to come out through the development of the action plan in terms of specific activity that we should be undertaking in terms of looking at, at active promotion. However, my personal view is that we, d we aren't necessarily in direct competition with other um, districts within Suffolk. We work on a very collaborative basis and share the strengths of each destination as opposed to um, trying to discourage people from visiting one part of Suffolk as opposed to visiting another. We've got some really strong, um, unique selling points across both Baber and Mid Suffolk. And what we want this piece of work to do is to be able to highlight those so that we can work in a more proactive way in terms of promotion. Yes, and just to um, add to that, one of the schemes of work that we, um, uh, as, a, as a consortium, are working on across uh, Norfolk and Suffolk, and that's culture leads, those uh, directors of destination management organisations, is a campaign called Head East, which is all around cultural tourism, um, and, and, and using it as a basis, particularly for markets around South Cambridgeshire, North Essex, North London, and that's where we work together collaboratively to say, okay, well, what's your selling point? What's your USP? This is our USP. And then work out itineraries that go across some of these borders so that when people think about coming to stay in Suffolk, they think about coming to stay for one, two, three, four days a week. And we do that by saying, okay, well, what's unique about your area? What's unique about our area? So we are, we are talking to each other. So there's going to be more conversations like that that's going to come out of the strategy. But that's an example. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ekpinyong. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I have a couple of queries, really. The first one is uh, following on from um, uh, the previous question regarding hotel accommodation, um, which I think is also something that we're sadly lacking 
uh, in particularly in stock market. And I just wondered what um, plans, if any, exist for developing hotel accommodations, particularly with regard to the fact that we have a, a huge developing industrial site at Gateway 14, which is going to, I hope, d drive demand for that kind of uh, accommodation. And certainly as someone who travels around the country staying in hotels, I know how <laughs> important that is. Uh, and the other thing is I'm really quite uh, unsure what the point of these four slides are from CT consultants um, and, and what, what, what they're a stepping stone to. Um, I assume that there's already a Suffolk-wide, um, you know, cultural heritage, blah, 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 strategy into which we fit. So um, it seems to me that the key issue here is how do we actually, uh, within that, pick out the salient points of, that are important for our district and our market towns? Um, and, and, and how does that all work together? It seems there's a lot of talking, and I don't see a lot of action. And, and this has been going on for a number of years since I've been a councillor. Thank you, Chair. I'll just, just come in briefly on that um, point, Councillor Pignol, that I certainly understand, um, particularly the issues, firstly, in relating to uh, stone market and lack of uh, hotel accommodation. I think that's, as you've already heard, it affects different, different towns across both districts. Um, as far as this strategy is concerned, as, as we've heard already, this has only been commissioned um, middle of last year, so it's a relatively uh, new strategy. In terms of the actual findings, we aren't at that point yet, um, but I do, certainly do take those points on board. In terms of the slides that are here from um, CT Consult, I don't know whether officers want to expand on exactly the process that that's been undertaken, but one of the things you will see in, in the documents that we've submitted is that there are a wide range of stakeholders, both in Stone Market but also our more rural areas who we've consulted with, engaged with as part of this process. But obviously if there are additions or omissions that you think um, would be beneficial, then I'm, I'm sure we're more than happy to take those on board. Um, but I don't know if officers want to provide any more detail to that. Um, yes, just, just by way of adding a small amount of extra detail, the slides were really uh, used with the stakeholders to uh, prompt discussion. Um, so I think we just gave it as an example in, in this report of the kind of uh, areas that the, um, that the consultants were seeking to stimulate discussion. Of course, uh, taking in any other comments as well, though. So it's, it's more a, an indication of the kind of thing that came out in the stakeholder workshops. It's not the findings uh, that will come later to Cabinet. Um, it's very much about stimulating the, the discussion with stakeholders. Thank you. Um, do you have a follow-up question? Thank you. Yeah, I, I, thank you for that response. But I, th I think it, it really um, only addresses part of my concern, which is that um, the, the points raised in these set of four slides have been knocking around for quite some time. So, you know, to me, the, the CD consultants fleshing these out is kind of moot, really. The point of the matter is, what is the strategy? What is the action plan? And when it's all, is it all going to be put together and implemented? So um, we're not here today to discuss the strategy and the findings. This is very much around the process that we've been through as officers to uh, the background, if you like, to get to the point of the findings. The findings will actually go to Cabinet. Um, what I would say is, and I, I completely understand the point around some of the, you know, some of these themes are not new. Um, I would point out that Bayburn Mid Suffolk councils have never had a cultural heritage or visitor economy strategy. They've never had either one of those things. So for us, it was really important, even though we know anecdotally some of these themes have been sort of floating about. It was really important to try to bring that into one document so that we can develop a robust action plan out the back of it that we can actually follow um, because you know we all know uh, we all know that these themes have been have been around but I think what we're trying to do with the strategy is bring them into one place develop a robust action plan but as I said that will go forward to cabinet as the next stage could, could I butt in and ask for you to give us a bit of a time frame of you've talked about um, strategy this isn't the strategy you're going to be working on the strategy it's going to be more consultation then there's going to be a strategy then there'll be action plans can you give us a bit of a time frame on when those different things will happen yep sure no problem um 
So actually, the time frame on this is pretty tight. Um, this is, this is, the strategy itself is going to full council on the 6th of March. And then CT consults, um, at Cabinet on the 6th of March. CT consults then have a duty to provide a delivery plan by the end of June this year. So between uh, uh, full council, Cabinet, um, and, um, and, and the delivery plan, there's actually a short amount of time for to go back out to consultation to say, right, what are the actions we want to see in the delivery plan? This is external consultation, remember. So we get lots of buy-in from those people who have been engaged in the whole process. So then from June onwards, we have a delivery plan, and we have a delivery plan for the next five to ten years, which will be our evidence base for investment going forward. So from the time of us appointing CT Consults, which was only last September, um, August, September, um, it's, we've actually kind of moved quite quickly on this. So we will, we will have a delivery plan by the, by the end of June, if that answers questions around deadlines. Yeah, can I ask one other question? Is, is there a link between what you're trying to do and the joint local plan? Because one of the, one of the areas that has been quite a bit of interest is around hotels. And you said there must be land available for hotels. Um, there, must, there must be some way that we can encourage people to stay in Mid Suffolk and Baber. Now, when people come to see us, they stay in Bury St Edmunds or they stay in Colchester or they stay at the Premier Inn, I think that's probably just in Mid Suffolk, um, near Claydon. But, but that nobody ever seems to stay in Sudbury or in Stowmarket. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> so, is there a link, or can there be a link, between your strategy and action plan and the joint local plan? I think the very simple answer is yes. Um, we are working very closely with the planning policy team to, to look at the work relating to part two of the joint local plan specifically um, and understanding what evidence we need in order to be able to take forward the delivery of the ambitions within this strategy and ensure that we have the appropriate site allocations included within JLP part two. The, the other thing to note is that there is a substantial amount of holiday accommodation within both Baber and Mid Suffolk that isn't just hotel accommodation. So the unserviced self-catering um, accommodation it, it provides a substantial amount of economic benefit to the two districts. And we have seen, particularly through COVID, we've seen an increase in the number of people staying in self-catering accommodation because they can then control the, um, the environment uh, more and make sure that they're, they're comfortable with it. So it's, for us, it's not just about the serviced hotel accommodation, it's about making sure that we have sufficient scale, quantity and type of accommodation that meets the, um, the expectations of visitors coming into the districts. Thank you. Did you have anything further, Councillor Ekpignon? Uh, Councillor Hinton, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <coughs> Excuse me. A uh, couple, of, couple of points. Uh, firstly, uh, 4.8, it talks about a cross-member working group. Who's on the cross-member working group? They've met twice, but uh, I've no idea who's on it. Because uh, obviously it would be a, the ideal group for individual councillors to be able to feed information into. And the second point is we, keep to, we often talk about building on the tourism buy-in to this area. In other words, creating more for them to see when they come here or making it available to them when they come, come here. Uh, and yet we don't seem to do anything about safeguarding it. I've got a particular example in my village where a, an archaeological interest site effectively was bulldozed flat. Well, that's hardly building on the, on the uh, tourism buy-in, which it, it could have been part of because it was linked directly to Constable, uh, and I live in East Burkholt, which is Constable country, so we could, uh, we could be building on the buy-in for this. So they wouldn't just come to see where Constable was born or where he did some of his painting or anything like that. They could see the other things that happened in that area at the time when he was alive and around, because this particular site was linked directly to the mill that his father ran. Um, the other th thing linked into that, of course, is the fact that the Store Valley has four big well, internationally known painters associated with it. We only hear about one and a half of them. I say one and a half because we hear about Gainsborough from the point of view of quite a lot goes on at Gainsborough's house in, in Sudbury, which has got a focal point. 
because the National Trust run Flatford Mill as an independent organisation, we don't tend to hear very much about it. And then I see in the in the papers today that, uh, in, that we've got today that Constable is in with a small C. So whether that ref whether that reflects on uh, the, the image that we tend to give him or what, I don't know. But we've then got two other brown painters in Stubbs and Turner who operated literally half a mile over the border in Dedham, in that area. So are we linking the whole lot together? Because there is a, a big enough package there to build a proper artist tour around it. Whereas they come into the village of East Burkholt, it by their coach loads and by their car loads, quick look at Flatford Mill, perhaps a walk along the, the side of the store, and then back in their cars and off they go again. There's no extra sort of economic benefit to the whole area. So I'll answer the second point first, and, and then I might hand over to colleagues about the membership of the group. Um, I, again, uh, officers are here today really to talk about the process that we've gone through to get us to the strategy. Um, however, we do recognise um, exactly what you're saying, that uh, the ability to have a strategy and having worked uh, with an extensive range of partners and stakeholders means we can start to look at forming a plan that has cross-border links and has, you know, I, I agree with you in terms of an, an artist that just happens to fall outside of the administrative boundary, that shouldn't be a barrier. So I very much expect that the strategy will start to pick up um, cross-border relationships. Um, I think, as, as my colleagues have said, um, without having something that brings uh, all of that together, that we can talk to partners, stakeholders and funders about, it's quite difficult to get things like that off the ground. So we hope that this strategy will be a stepping stone to enable us to have some very meaningful conversations just about things like trails and cross-border partnerships and relationships. Um, I'm afraid someone else will have to comment on the, on the membership of the group. Yep, happy to do that. Um, yeah, so the member advisory group um, members were nominated um, and we have uh, Councillor Jane Gould, John Ward, Bryn Hurran, John Nunn, Penny Otten, Keith Scarf, and Tim Parsmore. Um, we've met uh, two times, um, and we're meeting again uh, in the first week of, of, of February. And the purpose of that group is to talk about the process, to talk about initial findings, and then go back to other, to other members to, to share any of this. Chair, with your permission, might I just add um, one small point on, on the back of um, what officers have just said? Because I think, and I appreciate this isn't perhaps the, the implication, but one thing that I was reflecting on as, as the discussion was, was ongoing was, and I, I think this is an important point to make, I can't illustrate it with examples from Baber, but I will from Mid-Suffolk, that the absence of a strategy of this sort doesn't mean that the, districts, the district councils haven't been trying to support our visitor economies. I think one example that I can give that I think most members will agree on for Mid-Suffolk is the development of the Duck and Teapot at Needham Lakes. Um, I think that's been a fantastic project for us as a district. Uh, I think that's been a real positive um, for the visitor economy. I know it's incredibly popular in and of itself. So whilst, as, as, as you've heard uh, from Fiona, this is a great stepping stone for us, um, I don't want the, the implication to be that we haven't been supporting our visitor economy and our culture and heritage assets um, beforehand, because I don't think that's the case at all. Yes, can, yes, Councillor Hinton. Well, thank you for that. It wasn't. It, I know that the the officers have been working behind the scenes on this, but sometimes when things are more visible, you get extra input from the members who are on the ground in their in their wards all the time and picking up information uh, and feeding it back in. So I think that's important, and certainly the feedback that I got from the, my parish council who went along to one of the workshops that the consultants have run, was that it was very good, it was very useful. But what we would like to see is some, inverted commas, action, if you like, and perhaps even the planning policy team uh, considering something like a supplementary planning document, so that when these archaeological sites are discovered, they are properly evaluated, rather than somebody just saying, oh yes, we've seen one of those before, you can cover it over, which appears to be in the case in this particular case. Well, nobody's going to come and see something that's been covered over. And if we want them to just Google Constable Country and have a look at it online, fair enough, but it's not going to do us a lot of good. Thank you. Uh, I don't think that needs a response. So uh, can I pass on to Councillor Lindsay, please? 
Thanks. Yeah, I was going to ask about the timetable. Um, so, uh, thank you for. That does sound tight to get a um, a strategy up. And so, since we're here to ask about the process, I'm a bit concerned that I get. I think I can list just looking at the list of attendees and the list of um, contacts. There's huge chunks missing. Um, you know, the, the, um, there are uh, the historic churches in, in Suffolk. We've got some of world in significance. In Brentini, there's um, paintings in the church by a monk. It's the, it, 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 nobody knows about it, but it's, the, it's unique in the world. It's the earliest painting um, by, a, by a monk uh, anywhere in the world. Um, that uh, sadly it was vandalised uh, a while ago, but I think it's been being restored. Um, I know all our churches are, are absolutely unique and, and valuable. We've got a Suffolk Historic Churches Trust. They don't seem to be on the list. Um, there's nothing about that you know that I can see about sustainability. We've got a climate um, goals. Um, if we're if we've got a strategy to encourage lots of people to come to our districts, uh, we need to take care that we're not creating huge parking issues, you know. Um, uh, so I don't see anything in the papers before us that show that you're, you're taking that into account, that, that the sustainability side, there, there's, going back to the churches, you know, they have a... a a ride and stride that the churches trust once a year um, between churches it involves to raise money for the for the churches but it it's something that that visitors would probably like to be involved in if they knew about it or it could be expanded uh, and it's something that residents might be interested in as well um, and that's you, you're because you're walking or cycling you're not adding to the burden of traffic or parking um, uh, just in the field of arts, we've got Benton End in Hadley, um, Cedric Morris and his partner, I forget the name, they were absolutely crucial to the development of, um, uh, there's a whole school a, that they created, a school of art, in pottery, all that culture. And I, I went to the Colchester uh, Museum recently, and they had a map of, and it centres in Benton End in Hadley, with all the, the potters, sculptors, um, artists that have been trained at that school in Hadley uh, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and there was loads scattered around Suffolk, including in Baber and Mid Suffolk. Um, people like Maggie Hambling at, at, that were trained at that school. Um, doesn't seem to be any mention of that here, so I'm quite concerned about that. Um, uh, also, no mention about our, our nature reserves and the Suffolk Wildlife Trust. Um, again, unique habitat we have in Suffolk. Um, uh, unique ancient woods um, in, in little pockets. I went the other weekend and had a walk through the woods near Stone Market. Um, the the uh, Brad, Bradfield Woods. Uh, there's been books written about Bradfield's Woods. It's absolutely, it's a medieval landscape um, um, and probably goes back into way into prehistory. Um, so wh what are we doing to capture some of that and identify those unique assets that we have? So that, sorry, that was a, <laughs> a big question, but quite simple, really. And, and um, my other question is, um, you know, we can, in, the, in this process, we've got something to go before Cabinet by the 6th of March. Is there going to be, there's no point in a strategy unless you have clear goals and clear milestones, and there's nothing in this telling us what they might be, um, or even whether you're going to draw them up, whether there's going to be a budget for this. Um, uh, so, um, 
to, can, can, can you assure us that the strategy that will come before Cabinet will include clear, measurable targets and goals and milestones, you know, smart targets rather than some, I, I, I don't want to be disparaging, but sort of waffly stuff about what a lovely lot of assets we have. It's meaningless unless, it'll just sit on a bit of paper unless there's some kind of budget and, and some kind of um, goals there. Thanks. Who'd like to have a go at that? <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. I'll start. I, I think I might have to bring colleagues in to answer. Um, just, just, so just, just to reiterate, um, what, what you see in the information uh, provided in the appendices with this report uh, are some areas for discussion with stakeholders. So uh, it may be that not everything you've mentioned is, is listed, but that's not to say the conversations haven't been had in those stakeholder groups. I will just pick up one area, which is the kind of sustainability piece, um, and that's definitely in there. I've just double-checked. There's, there's a whole section in terms of some of the questions that were asked of st stakeholders in terms of uh, what does the greenest place mean for cultural heritage and tourism sectors, um, opportunities for creativity in the outdoors. So I think some of the questions you're asking, it was covered in, in some of the workshop sessions, but we probably haven't explicitly described it in the way that, that you have. Um, in terms of the, um, in terms of detailed act costed actions, that will come. It will not be in the strategy, it will be in the implementation plan that follows. So what will go to Cabinet first will be the strategy, and that will have um, themes or pillars uh, that, that are identified as, as being priorities for this strategy. Um, but as I said, the, the next step on after that will be around implementation plan, and we fully expect that to have costed work packages within it, um, but, but there are stages that we have to go through, so they're unlikely to be in the strategy. Um, I'm going to hand over to my colleagues in terms of the sort of engagement with, with various different partners and stakeholders. Yeah, thank you. Um, firstly, Benton End. Uh, I talked to Benton End a lot, um, and uh, it's just the fact that Joe Wiltshire, the, 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 uh, the, lead, the lead there, hasn't been available to talk to them as yet. Um, but she is very much on the list, and Benton End, we know about all the huge developments coming out of there. It would be remiss of us not to include them. They are a key partner. So rest assured they are, they are being consulted with. Um, and the same with uh, the churches. So we've been talking to the Churches Conservation Trust. Um, as, aside this piece of work, CT Consults have been working with East Suffolk on developing a, a strategy for East Suffolk. Um, and they are talking to the Historic uh, Churches Trust and they're talking to Suffolk Wildlife Trust. So we are engaging with those partners. It was remiss of us not to put them on the list, but they have been consulted with. Um, so, and the purpose of this today, again, as we're talking about the process, is if you see anybody on that list that you think, oh, hold on, we need to be talking to those guys, please do let us know. This is, um, this is, this is part of it. And we still have time to do that piece of work. And just to reiterate what, what, what Fiona said, today you're being presented with what we've been doing up until now and the process we've been going through, not the outputs and the, and, and the themes at this point. Did you have another question? Um, the, the, I raised the cycling um, side of the piece because the, um, the other thing I didn't mention is there's, there's, it's very easy to drive to somewhere like Lavenham. Um, it's not so easy to cycle, believe it or not. There's nowhere, I've actually had someone complain to me that there was nowhere to, to lock their, their bicycle in Lavenham, and, and that must apply to a lot of our attractions. So uh, is that piece being covered? Are the, we've got a lot of cycle groups in our districts. So are they being consulted? Um, again, I'll, I'll start, and so we might. Add, add some more to that. I, I mean, again, um, in, in what was presented by way of background information, we obviously pick up that rural communities and transport can, can be an issue, um, both for local people with visitors coming to them in, in different modes of transport, or, but also to get visitors to our uh, key heritage and cultural and visitor economy places. Um, we've been working very closely with Catherine. As you know, we have a, an LC WIP document now, which um, it has been very helpful in, in, in informing this process. So, um, again, rest assured uh, that we are making those links, even though perhaps those links are not explicitly mentioned in here. We have 
we have um, different strands of work that are picking that up. And of course, we want all of our strategies to be, to be linked together. So it would be very remiss of us to, to write an LC WIP document and to not have links as we develop the cultural heritage and visitor economy strategy. So yes, there will be links made in there. Oh, I just want to follow up. Um, the, the, so, will there be? I know you've said there's no environmental implications to this paper because it's just about process, but uh, you will be looking at the environmental uh, and carbon implications of the strategy when it goes before cabinet. That will be in there, will it? There will be something about. Um, yes, uh, definitely. And. and um we're obviously, uh, I'm lucky enough to have climate change now within my service directorate, so uh, it's, it's easier for us to make those links, so yes. Thank you. Can I move on to Councillor Carter, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm pleased to hear that there's still time to add some people to a list and still time to look at, uh, you've looked at some at the transport. Um, but so far I've heard mention of hotels, I've mentioned, it's been mentioned about um, basically advertising. It so, sounds like so far to do more to do with money in the coffers. People get in, tourism get money in. Well, what I'm interested in is um, 3.2, recognising that it's improving health and well-being. And I'm a bit conf confused as to why access hasn't been mentioned and why we haven't had uh, first and foremost one of the main consortees to be regarding access why haven't we included the disability groups because I know the SEIDP which covers Suffolk wide haven't been contacted the Suffolk Disability Forum hasn't been contacted the Mid Suffolk Disability Forum which we are partners with have not been con uh, contacted with so why haven't we Half of these organisations on this list contact them, but we haven't thought of contacting them directly to actually start a process that is inclusive for everybody, which we should thought about our residents and people visiting to make sure it's inclusive for all. And the other thing regarding access is, well, it's all very well. We have a lovely pi uh, picture of what we currently got heritage-wise, you know, get, again, getting tourists in. But we are currently in a financial crisis. Our members, our people, residents here, are in a financial crisis. Trying to get access to half of these, proper, half of these thing involves money to come in. You've got the different funds. Not everyone has the funds to go out and go to, a, 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 to see, say, Museum East Anglia Life, having to a membership or something like that. Well, sorry, Food Museum, not East Anglia Life involves having a membership. How are we going to help our residents who haven't got the funds to actually go out, haven't got funds to even now to go out to take the kids out or to get to... How are we going to help people to get access to have these cultural assets to improve on their well-being? And are, are we going to look thinking about having some money in reserves? Are we going to be contacting them as partners to see if they can actually put something aside for residents to think that is what we should be thinking about for, first and foremost actually the well-being aspect um, and I it, it also would, I did love to hear about the duck and teapot being mentioned yes access to that again when it's a new property which you cannot get to from a disabled parking onto there and we were talking about when we were, we were building it, it's about moving the linking the pathway up from the town centre of Needham Market to the property, that hasn't been done. So it'd be lovely if we actually say, did what we said, and that would improve, part, it, it show a little bit, a new property that we've done, and you, which is doing a nice little turnover in profits. It'd be lovely if we made it accessible to everyone as well. Just a thought. Thank you, who'd like to kick off with that one? I'll make one small point uh, first, thank you. Uh, Chair, and then I'll hand over to officers just to talk about um, stakeholder engagement. I just think we ought to be careful that we're not straying from the actual item that we're discussing. The Council does have its own cost of living plan, um, which has been implemented, and I know that colleagues have been working very hard on it to support our residents, but obviously that falls under 
um, the cabinet members for communities and wellbeing, so I can't address those points today because I'm not familiar with the detail of that. Um, but I certainly do take those points on board. Um, but in terms of stakeholder engagement, I'm happy to pass over to officers for more detail on that. Um, just by way of starting that, and I know Zoe wants to come in to talk about specifically some of those stakeholders. Um, I think, uh, again, if I refer you to the appendices, um, there is a, a section in there in terms of some of the questions that the consultants were asking stakeholders around um, uh, the benefits of, of health and well-being from spending time in, in our beautiful countryside, etc., um, but also about how people access uh, facilities um, and, and, and venues themselves. So I think that will start to come out uh, as we go forward with the strategy work. Um, in terms of, uh, obviously, there are links to uh, cost of living, and you know, it, it's a very, it's a very careful balance because uh, tourism, for example, is a key part of our economy. It employs many of our people, so it is a balance between making sure our residents can access those cultural venues, um, but also making sure that those cultural venues can actually keep going uh, in, in difficult times themselves with rising costs. So, Again, as Councillor Richardson said, that's not really for today, um, but it, I want to uh, reassure you that all, all of that will be picked up as we go through the process of developing the strategy. So did you want to specifically mention some of the disability oh, groups? Oh, sorry, Michelle. Um, and I can pick up the bit about um, stakeholder engagement, and I know we have spoken to some organisations, Obviously, we've missed a few, and part of the process today is to understand who we haven't spoken to, to because there's still, in, uh, there's still plenty of time for us to be able to have direct conversations with um, specific organisations, and if you're happy to work with us to ensure that we, have, that we speak to the right groups, then we'll, we'll certainly pick that up with you um, following today's meeting. The other thing that we have been doing that, work, that has been done alongside this piece of work is work with the Suffolk Growth um, Organisation who've been doing a piece of work around accessibility. Um, I haven't seen a full list of stakeholder engagement from that piece of work, and I'll pick that up separately as well, because what they're looking at is how we can support individual attractions to improve their accessibility. So it'll work alongside this piece of work so that we try and support not just access from train stations into our town centres or um, rural transport, but actually looking at working with um, Accessable um, to support individual attractions to invest in their accessible provision as well. Um, so we'll be, uh, there is a, a large work stream around accessibility and access um, that, is, that is being managed separately to this piece of work alongside that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Carter, have you got a follow-up question? Just a suggestion. Um, I would. I was saying cost of living. I wouldn't say because at the moment, funding going to cost of living will go into things that we are for living. Uh, we do have a pot of okay, baby, not so much. But we do have a pot of money. Why couldn't we do some subs look at subsidies tickets for those who need it to actually ensure that they have a, the funds to go in, not just having money going in, going needing to put more food on the table or put things like that which are desperate at the moment. It's just an idea. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm happy to work with you for certain other engagements. Can I, can I move on to Councillor Grandin? And then I have Councillor Scarf, Councillor Hinton and Councillor Barrett. So Councillor Grandin. Uh, well, quite a lot of the things I was going to say have now been answered because they were involved in um, Councillor Lindsay's uh, question, for example, bent and end. Um, and I think there's Munnings also just over the border. Um, one of the things that I think we, we haven't perhaps looked at quite as much or as, as a category perhaps in your um, list is the historic aspect. Um, because I think um, art, uh, painting and artists would be one category of people bigger than the Wool Town project that we had looked at um, previously. Um, um, but history, people come to an area when they're interested in the history of an area, history and architecture, they're so closely linked. 
and that was partly mentioned with the churches, but we've got so many other historic buildings in our districts that um, you know, that's another sector that doesn't seem to be covered so well in your um, list of consultees, but perhaps um, you, you could consider, because I think that's such a, that there's so much interest in place and history, um, and I don't want that to be forgotten, because people visit for particular reasons, I think. They visit a place, you get tours coming for such reasons as art and history. So I hope that, that maybe you could add that as a further category, please. Yes, carry on, thank you. Yeah, just to pick up uh, on that, we, we do also have an internal um, officer working group um, looking at this piece of work. And uh, we are inviting colleagues, and colleagues have come along from planning. Our heritage officers have also been That's involved great. in this. So um, we, are, we are picking that up, but we'll make it more explicit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I've got Councillor Scarf next. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a, a comment really about the um, sharing of sort of marketing Suffolk, as it were. Um, I must admit, if I'm travelling somewhere, and I'm currently trying to book somewhere in East Sussex, but really struggling um, to actually find a hotel accommodation, um, but when I'm looking at somewhere, uh, the first thing I do is I ever go uh, online and have a look to see what's available in the area in general. Uh, and then the first time I arrive in that particular area, when I get there, I often go to the tourist information centre and get brochures and look to see what's, see what's going. So I think in terms of sharing of the marketing as part of an overall larger organisation, which is clearly what we're doing, sometimes uh, that's good, but sometimes it also dilutes our offer. What, we, what, makes, us, what makes people want to come to mid Suffolk? what makes people want to come to Baver, if you like, the heart of Suffolk. Um, so I think we have to be a little bit careful there. Um, and I think it, it's, whilst it's welcome that we're, de we're developing this strategy, um, I think there seems to be a sense of frustration from members today because obviously we're looking at where we've got to now and perhaps we are scrutinising it too early in the process, I feel. Um, because really we should be scrutinising, I feel, the action plan that comes out of. So then we can hold people to account and say, okay, well, you've got this in your action, why haven't you got this in your action plan? Or at a later stage, we can look at the action plan and we go, okay, well, we've, well, we've done that, we said we were gonna do this, we've you know, um, done whatever the, the action point is, job done, or in progress, etc. So I think for us to scrutinise it today is actually very difficult because most members have got, I mean, they've all made very valid points, I think, about what we expect to see in it. So I think hopefully we will see this at some later stage, once, once, it's, once it's in action and, and, and a review of it at a later stage. And I, I can't help but resist making the point, if we really want to attract people to come to Mid Suffolk, why did we close the Tourist Information Centre in Mid Suffolk? Now, I know why we did it, but that doesn't send out the right message. And so I think some serious consideration, if you want people to come to either Baber or Mid Suffolk, must be how do we get a local tourist information centre point back, for example, in Stone Market? Because I think it's a really retrograde step. Hmm? Well, we have got, I mean, Mid Suffolk have got the money. Unfortunately, Baber haven't. But I think some consideration has got to be given to that in the future. Um, now, I accept it did, the, the, the model that we operated didn't work for various reasons, perhaps because of the location of, the mo of, of where we were at, but I think we still need to look at whether we can share a facility and do something in order to bring Tourist Information Centre back to the town. And I th the final point, I think the success of a lot of these venues, in particular, is related to the marketing and the draw that they offer. So, for example, um, the museum or the regal or something like that, just being very parochial and going about Stone Market, they bang the drum very loudly. And I think there's a lot more we can do to share those cultural experiences, whether it be the John Peel Centre, the regal, the museum, whatever. And I think 
that's where we should be concentrating on sharing our offer rather than perhaps concentrating on Visit Suffolk, where I think our offer is perhaps diluted because people would be attracted to go to the honey pots like Walberswick and South End and Oldborough and you know, not South End. Um, South Wold, sorry. Um, and I think when you're competing against that, you've got, you've got to just offer something different. I mean, we've heard about the Artless Trail and we've heard about pottery and, 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 and so on. I think there's an awful lot that we can develop on that. So I think that would be my point. Thank you. Chair, if I, if I may just make a yes, couple of quick, uh, points just to respond to that. Um, in terms of the sort of the process that has, has got us here, I'm, I'm more than happy to um, go away and discuss with officers about the value of bringing this forward today when we haven't further progressed this strategy versus perhaps later down the line. I think there's, there's, there's some merit in doing that so that you can um, derive the, the most value from this, from this process. Um, in, but in terms of the content, I think I'm happy to say that we can take that offline and, and develop those thoughts further as part of the working group. Um, I don't know if officers want to come in, but I think that's, that's generally the approach I would take to that. I've got Councillor Hinton again next, and then Councillor Barrett, and I've got nobody else after that except me. Uh. <laughs> Jealousy is not, not basis <laughs> becoming. <laughs> um, yes, it was a quick point, really, as much as anything else, and that is that we, as part of this strategy, I hope that we will see a lot more communication with the various individual providers, if that's the right word, of facilities out there in the, both districts. Because one of the things that uh, I suddenly came across, because it hadn't been publicised anywhere, was a touchscreen interactive demonstration of how they ring the bells in East Burkholt, because of course they're rung by hand. And I only came across it partly because I was down there sorting out the flowers on the War Memorial, ready for Remembrance Sunday. Uh, and there was a woman walking down the pathway towards the church with great difficulty using sticks. And she was part of a group that had come off a coach that were going around the centre of the village and then around the church and were having a talk round by the bell cage on the bells and how they worked. And I said to her, look, you don't have to go round there and try and keep up with them. Come with me. I took her into the church, sat her down on a chair in front of this, this presentation, and she could see exactly what the rest of the party were doing, sitting down inside the church. Now that sort of thing adds to the visitor attraction of all sorts of different events. And the technology is there nowadays. It doesn't seem to be that expensive. This, I believe, was put in place by something to do with the uh, Dedham Vale. Yeah, thank you. Um, Councillor Barrett. Thank you. We're now supporting questions. <laughs> you know, so much of this has been, has been said that it does trigger, trigger other, other ideas. Um, Um, I'm, I'm coming at this from sort of uh, the point of view of in Sudbury, but this applies wider as well. So in Sudbury, we've got three cultural uh, offers, um, Gainsborough House, St Peter's, to be open later this year, and the Key Theatre, the only theatre in, in Baber. Um, there might be an ap a planning application that comes forward that supports uh, them, um, that they're uh, there to them to the public. Um, that that could be in the conservation area. It might be controversial in some people's eyes. Um, would this strategy support? Can this strategy be used as a tool, really, to support those to sort of make the business case? Because I think it's really important that the economic development team who understand the you know, the whys, what the benefits are to our residents directly um, from growing our cultural offer in, the, in our, in our home, hometowns. Um, so can that be used to, to, to support, will, you know, will, 
will all planning applications come forward look at, uh, ha have comments from the, the team and will the strategy then support uh, and, and help that? That's the first one. If, if you'd like, I can answer that one immediately and the answer is, would be yes. So myself and the team would reply to all uh, planning applications that are related to economic growth and we currently do that already. This strategy would provide us with evidence of need and of justification that we would be able to then use to support the further economic growth and delivery of um, additional investment in attractions and cultural venues across the two districts. So yes, assuming that the planning application that you refer to is for the, the future growth and development of the key theatre, then it would likely be um, be something that we would, we would definitely be providing comment on planning application. Yeah, thank you. That's great. I mean, it just needs to, the strategy needs to jump off the page at some stage, doesn't it? And stop being a, just a piece of paper and being a, a more dynamic thing. So that sounds good. Um, I just wondered also about um, uh, whether the, this strategy could address the, the skills development in the area. Because, um, as you, you know, we say, um, this area is a billion pound sort of business and it must offer uh, opportunities for jobs locally um, and, and apprenticeships. Might it be able to address some of that? So, um, yes, uh, I think, again, in, in the appendices, there's definitely um, reference to opportunities uh, for people to take local employment. Um, I think there's a, there's a challenge, as we all know, in the, in the sector around um, the sector, generally speaking, being fairly lo low wage and low skilled. So I think anything we can do to draw out in the strategy around how we can help support um, the sector to become more resilient and become a sort of more attractive career choice, the, the, the better really. So um, that's certainly something which we have been discussing through the stakeholder groups. But if you wanted to add to that, Sarah. Yeah, just as an example, one of the pieces of work we're doing at the moment is uh, through Suffolk Growth, and it's the Veni project, which is around skills and training uh, across the hospitality sector. Um, um, so we're working with West Suffolk, West Suffolk College on that, trying to enable young people to be skilled up in the hospitality, retail um, sector, um, more uh, work experience across uh, cultural and heritage venues, that sort of thing. Um, so that's one of the big projects we're going to do uh, this year. And what will also come out of this, without going into too much detail, is that we also have Periscope, which is a local education partnership uh, for, for children and young people, which takes in Mid-Suffolk, Baber, and West Suffolk. And that is a, 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 a partnership across all of the primary schools, high schools, and colleges in that, in that area. Um, and the purpose of this is, through this strategy, we uh, are able to demonstrate what our priorities and what our delivery plan is, to, as we talked before, to go out for additional funding likes of Arts Council, Heritage Lottery, to make some education projects um, to get them off the ground, essentially, and up and running. So um, skills, training, all of that will be built into it, because we realise that's, that's, that's a, a real area of need. So, yeah. Might be final. You um, lied about the 14, then. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, I wouldn't inflict that on you. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's you can comment in the, a strategy on transport, but there is um, there have been suggestions and, and um, sort of uh, uh, conversations I think taking place about a direct link from London onto the Gainsborough line, the the line that comes into Sudbury from Marks Tay. Currently, you have to change trains. Might there be any? Um, any support for for looking at transport into the area as well um, that would benefit access, sustainability, as Councillor um, Lindsay has, has talked about? So again, one of the uh, areas that we have been uh, prioritising for discussions with stakeholders has been around the challenges around transport. I can't really comment specifically on, on uh, rail links at, at this time, but 
Um, what the strategy will enable us to do is to have meaningful conversations with not just local and regional partners and stakeholders, but, but national stakeholders as well. And obviously we have a good relationship with Transport East, who do a lot of, uh, sort of lob lobbying for the East, and um, so the ability for us to carry on linking with them and use them uh, if that comes out as a priority in the strategy um, is something we can do. So we can lobby on a national scale through, through our partners, as well as by ourselves, of course. Councillor Dawson. Um, yes, I would just comment. I, 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 about three years ago, I had a conversation with our MP, um, James Cartledge, with Mark Bills, and all the arts, a whole load of arts people, about 15. Some of you might have been there. And at that time, it was really impossible to get a strategic um, mean, a strategy to how we could coordinate visitors to the um, Munnings. Gainsborough and Benton End and we all walked out the meeting thinking well it's just really when people come up here they want to see the three within the county and I have to say I, I think personally we're absolutely and I've got a lot of experience with London museums I've done a lot of work on this over the years I really think we're barking up the wrong tree trying to do Suffolk and mid-Suffolk they each of those um you know, they've got their own identities and trying to get these people I've never met anyone really who um, would come to Benton End and or Gainsborough and then wants to go they, they, generally, this gentleman says they, they go up to the coast or they go to North Norfolk they're not really going to go to Stowmarket when they've been to that's not going to happen so you know you might be wasting an awful lot of time focusing on that and I would be looking at focusing on what is within each district first before we start trying to do it um, uh, across the borders. It's, it's, I can't see that working, certainly at this stage. And the second um, point is, um, and this came up a, a lot at the opening of the Gainsborough, one of the things that really concerns me, we've got this absolutely fabulous state of the art, um, those of you, I don't know if you've all been, but what really concerns me about all of this is, it is and they keep saying we've got um, plans for this, but they never come out. Um, it's £17 pounds to go in there. And, um, you know, I guess it's a great state of the art. We've got to pay for it. But what really bothers me is uh, apparently if I buy a lottery ticket, I might be able to go in there free one afternoon. Well, I know nothing about this. And, and all the schools in Hadley, all these people really want to go and see this wonderful building. And there's no accessibility. And the whole ethos, historically, certainly around museums, is that they are there that for the poor, that anybody should be able to go in. So we've got a situation whereby, you know, we're making our museums very inaccessible. And I really think a large part of this strategy must be focused on how we can get the numbers in, certainly for youngsters. Um, but how, how, that's where the focus should be on, on those two areas, the transport within, um, within uh, Baber and within Mid-Suffolk, and how we get the numbers as the youngsters making it uh, not just once a year or twice a year, it should be every week for two hours on a Monday afternoon when perhaps the museum isn't so busy. It should be part of their education. Thank you. Can we take that as a point rather than a question? Um, I've, I've, I've got a few questions, just to ask whether these people have been contacted. Um, have you contacted fundraising organisations that run large charity events? Uh, the reason I ask that is that I was persuaded that we should open our garden on Open Garden Sunday in Stowe Upland. And uh, there were people from, uh, the furthest was from Sunderland. Um, not that they'd heard of our garden or anything. Um, and talking to these people, but they, they plan a holiday around visiting villages that have got open gardens. So they might go to Stowe Upland in the morning and then they may go to Old Newton in the afternoon. But these are people who were, they were staying near the coast because they couldn't find anywhere to stay anywhere near the villages that they wanted to visit. But have you contacted charity events? Because lots of people travel some distance to help raise money and St Elizabeth Hospice is, is one such. 
Um, tourist information centres, have you thought about perhaps a virtual tourist information centre? If um, we, we, we go to France with some friends and they booked, they booked a, a holiday let in a little village that I'd never heard of. It's got a population of about 120. So I put the village name into, the, uh, into Google with tourism and they've got a tourism page. And yeah, they're, they're the size of Weatherden. They're nothing like as big as sort of Stowe Upland or Old Newton or even Stowe Market. But you just put in the village, you put in the village and the, and the word tourism and it came up with about 20 different places within 10 kilometers that we could visit. Um, and I think that's worth, that's worth looking at. Um, will you have a different strategy for our residents compared with people who are coming from afar? Just a question, I don't necessarily, something to look at. Um, uh, have, you, have you thought about industrial heritage? And if so, how have people been consulted? Because I know around, around the Sudbury area and in Stowe Market, there's a lot of industrial heritage I mean, so, some of it centres around explosions and things like that. But, but you know, people people do come, people go long distances to look at industrial heritage, and there there is some about. And people go lo long distances for angling and fishing lakes. Um, is that something that you've con consulted around? Um, uh, and w we're looking at themes. Um, one of the themes that I thought was would be quite interesting is, is development of agricultural machinery. Now there's a, a guy who was a resident of Stowe Upland back in the 1600s who developed all sorts of new agricultural machinery, the, the, sort, yeah, the, the, the predecessors of what we use today. But uh, I mean people, unless you go to the museum of, the food museum, at the time that it was a museum of East Anglian life, there was a whole shed devoted to to Robert Bowby, but um, have we thought about themes around people? So those are, those are my questions, not looking for an answer to any of those, but I have got Councillor Carter. Then we're gonna move on to debate. I think we've had quite a bit of debate within the questions, um, and, uh, and hopefully then move quite quickly on to listing some recommendations. So Councillor Carter. Thank you. Just busy putting on my scarf. I think next time we'll have my hat on as well. Um, uh, it, part of this has been recognising the food and uh, drink heritage. Uh, we have to remember it's part of the, through Suffolk and Faber, uh, well, throughout Suffolk, we have a monastic heritage. We have a horticultural heritage. We yeah. used to have a orchard trail joining up the abbeys and the different churches where we, we used to do the monastic roots and it wouldn't be wonderful if we could actually do a bit about uh, uh, climate change, do a bit about our tree, tree cover, do a bit about, and actually try to restore some of these walks, which we did have talked about for many years and nothing happened. As when if the, if the Museum of Staying Life tried a project some six years ago, that didn't happen. So wouldn't it be lovely to refocus on that? But I do realize some of that route has been lost and we have lost quite a bit of heritage has been picked up on some of the older some of the older sites of uh, historical sites have been being bulldozed flat well we've had mention of virtual um, virtual uh, tourism would it not be possible to recognize some of the things that we have had still part of our heritage but uh, we have lost could we not do some things like a QR codes and have some virtual demonstrations to have some uh, things with, with the, uh, that we have with telephone apps in the Eden Lake. We didn't need to have something like that to actually bring people in to the areas that used to be and educate something what we've lost and had could be a bit of a draw in that way, but also free to people to, to access. It'd be quite nice to remember what, what has gone before. And oh, just going back to the Orchard Trail and Heritage thing, we were far reaching out to the uh, East of England um, Orchard Project because that's quite things that uh, have records of plants and um, trees today that are linked specifically in Suffolk. 
uh, such as, say, for Sudbury, for example, uh, where they've got to be Red Miller Seal and things like that. It'd be lovely to actually have as part, recognised part of heritage, maybe bring that in and involve it in some of our projects. Just, just an idea. Thank you. Um, now, members, how, how do we want to proceed now with, towards a recommendation? Uh, I mean, my feeling is that we've thrown out loads and loads of points, uh, and I guess officers have made a note of most of them. The rest are all on the tape anyway. Um, it's pointless, I think, us trying to um, make a list of things that we want uh, the officers to take account of. So would members be happy if we, as the main part of our recommendation, um, say to Cabinet, we've looked at the work that has been done thus far, we've made further suggestions, suggestions for further work prior to the strategy going to Cabinet, um, and is there anything that, is that sufficient? Is there anything that you add to, would like to add to that? I think that Councillor Scarf, you, was it you who suggested that it perhaps should come, should come back at some point? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, because I, I feel this morning we 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 got very clouded over the process and contributions that we wanted to make. And I think once we've got the action plan in place, once it's gone and, and we've actually got a document in place, it would be right that it came back to scrutiny at a future date to be determined, so that we could look at that action plan and see how the strategy has actually developed, what we're delivering on uh, and what we're not delivering on, because I think that gives us a bit more of a focus. So I think I would like as a recommendation that it comes back to the Joint Overview and Scrutiny Committee at a suitable time uh, for a further report so we can review it again. So would you suggest, Councillor Scarf, that might be after the strategy has been approved by Cabinet, assuming it's approved on the 6th of March? I think it has to be, Chair, because I think um, the, the, we, we need to get it through the process yeah. so that we can review it once it's an adopted strategy, if you like. But before, before the draft, be, and, and see a draft action plan. Yeah. So we're talking about some point between 6th of March and June, um, which, <laughs> which, is, which is not possible. I, I, I was just looking at, at Jan because that is through the election period. So it would probably have to come back in June in whatever state that it is in, whether it's just prior to it being formally adopted. Is this a strategy that would have to go to council, to full council? No. We don't, we don't want to put ourselves in the position where we have to call something in if, it's, uh, if, we, if there is a way to avoid that. Um, so it may be... Chair, would it make more sense to put it on a further date and actually wait until some of the action plan is being implemented and review how that action plan is, is, is um, going to make sure that it is hitting the targets that is in the actual plan? So I would suggest maybe later on in the year, after the first six months, to review, because you're not, you're not going to be able to, to take it between March and June just because of the elections. You're no. going to have a new committee... Um, who will need to sort their own work programme. So logistically, you're not going to get it back, really, I don't think, before July. And I, I would suggest that you put um, a further time on that so that at least the action plan can start to be implemented and you can have a look at how that is going. I w yeah, my, I mean, my, my feeling would be quite a bit after July because we don't really want to do it in the middle of the holiday season. We want to, I guess, see, see what's happened at sort of the end of the calendar year. Well, on that basis then, Chairman, why don't we say that that's got to come back to this committee a year from now, which would give you the six months you know, period to see how things are being implemented, uh, how that action plan is developing, and, and uh, go from there. Would you be happy with that, Councillor Scarf? Um, yeah, Chair, I mean, I, I, I feel perhaps six months is perhaps a bit tight, because uh, yeah. I think a year after the action plan is produced would be the right time to review the action plan and, and accordingly that dictates the timetable for, for us. If, if we know in advance that that's what we're going to do, it also makes it easier to timetable. Um, I think the points made 
that, I mean, obviously there'll be a new committee, so there'll be new members who are completely unaware of the strategy, but actually that's not a bad thing yeah. because then they can review an action plan uh, and, and actually make fresh comment rather than having previously made comment today. So do I have a proposal from somebody? Uh, are you proposing that we, we ask officers to take account of the comments made during the, during the questioning and the debate and to bring back the action plan in or around January uh, next year? Um, I, are you... Um, if it's okay, Chair, I just wanted to clarify. So there, did we say that the, the action the delivery plan doesn't have to go before council, but it does have to go before cabinet, does it? Yeah. For approval, and that will happen in? March. Yeah. No, June. The, June. Yeah. the strategy's in March. June's the... Okay. Yeah, it's... Okay, well, I, I'd just like to make the observation that I'd rather have had sat here and been able to scrutinise the delivery plan before it's approved, rather than after it's approved. But, um, yeah, I just, I'm not sure that the timing is, is very good for, for scrutiny, but that's Well, I, th I, th I think that's shared with others, and perhaps between, between the strategy and the, and the delivery plan would have been an appropriate time, but we're not going to be able to do that. So, um, I, I don't know whether, Alicia, have you typed something out appropriate or? or I'm happy to go just as it was, as it was said. Yeah. yeah, so are you, are you content that we, we vote on um, the, the uh, Sorry, can I just be clear? Are we saying 12 months after the delivery plan is approved, so that would be 12 months from June? Or, or six months from the delivery plan being approved, which is in June, which takes us to January. I think we were talking about January next year. So, yeah. 12 months from now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, with those two points, um, we'll, we'll vote uh, by the electronic system, but the points that we'll, we'll be voting on are that officers take account of the points raised during questioning and debate uh, and bring back the uh, action plan, um, a, review of the, a, re a review of progress on implementing the action plan in January next year. Are you content with that? Are you happy to vote on that without it being typed in perfectly on the, on the screen? Okay. So, so getting back, I think, Councillor Scuff, you were proposing it. I, th I think, I think um, Councillor Eckman, you more or less seconded it earlier, if, you, if, if you're happy with that. Thank you. So, um, yeah, we'll turn to the electronic voting then. Thank you, Chair Members. That vote is now in progress. Councillor Lindsay, can I take your vote? Please? Four. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. That is 12 votes for, so that is unanimous. And we've now got an opportunity to look at the overview and scrutiny action tracker. This is for noting. Um, I'm assuming there's no comments on that so we will we will note the overview and scrutiny action tracker um, the next the next part of the meeting is to um, confirm the confidential minute of the meeting held on the 19th of December 2022 if there is to be any discussion on that then we will have to go into 
um, a section with the public excluded. If there is no discussion, then we can approve that minute without having to go into confidential session. So firstly, does anybody wish to discuss it, debate it, question it? That being the case, would somebody like to propose that we confirm the confidential minute of the... Councillor Caston has proposed it, and do we have a seconder? Councillor Carter, thank you very much. So we will, we will go straight on to our uh, electronic voting, and let's come up bright blue. Thank you, Chair. Members, the vote is now in progress. Councillor Lindsay. Thank you. Councillor Carter, would you rather you vote verbally? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's come through. Thank you. Chair, that is eight votes, four and four abstentions. That's carried. be held on the 20th of February 2023. Thank you very much.